I'm excited because I'm hanging out with my old pal Lonnie McCaskill. He is one of the directors of the Prospect Part 2, curator of, uh, of the zoo. Yeah, curator of the zoo. Head chief. Yeah. Big man Assistant on director, yeah. Assistant director. All right, so you haven't seen him uh, with us in a little while because he's way up here in Brooklyn. And uh, what I'm excited about, though, is the work they're doing here at the zoo with a very special species of turtle, the big-headed turtle. So just beyond this door, we're going to see the Chelonian Propagation Center. And uh, Kyle, don't forget, yeah. dude. Uh, we got Kyle. <laughs> we we got to have a safari. Yeah, we're going on an urban safari, kid. Let's go. Oh, hello there. <laughs> All right, so we're going to head on in right after this. Well, welcome and come on in. All right. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. Talk to me, man, like what is happening in here? Well, this is kind of the center of our um, growing Chilean breeding facility. Right now we're uh, breeding Chinese big-headed turtles. Okay. Um, we've bred them for now about six years in a row, and hopefully we're gonna get breeding this year. These are uh, individual adults that we keep over here. Um, we put them physically, put them together, preparing for breeding, because um, they don't get along, you know, they don't oh, get that. along together. So um, after they're done breeding, we separate them, put them back in their individual tanks. Oh, that's crazy. So that's actually a lot of, um, there's a lot of involvement with the keepers here. To, to, when do you know it's time for them to actually start breeding? Well, we cycle them like they would cycle in nature. They go through a winter, um, estivation kind of, and then we bring them out. Uh, they're just now coming into their spring. We slowly start bringing up the water temperatures, oh, okay. um, and then as their appetites, and they start picking up a little bit, then we start putting them together. And we'll put them together until we don't see any interest in breeding at all. Okay. And then they're sep they're done for the year. Gotcha. Then you just separate them. Right. They go back to their bachelor lifestyles. And exactly. And really. Um, in, in the wild, they pretty much have the same type of be behavior. The females will kind of hunker down in small mountain streams in, in small po pockets of water, small pools, and males will go up and down the streams. And, uh, and, and yeah, and there, it's not like a turtle like we just got through seeing out in the park where you'll see, you know, 30 or 40 on a log. That's not their type of behavior. They'll occupy a small area and a small pond and, and a pool and stay there. Well, let's see what you got going on. So this is um, this is a pretty involved uh, it's pretty filtration involved. system. It's, um, it's involved, in, and as our center grows, as we build this, uh, we'll be able to totally dismantle it and move it um, to another location if we want to, if, if we want to uh, do some more um, adding on to the facility. Awesome. So, so these are our individual animals here, the mains. And, um, and again, it's filtration. This now, this is a breeding setup. This is um, chilled water. Uh, in some of these other tanks, it's just um, basically air, same temperature as the air. Okay. But this is chilled, so it can go through a winter cycle. It's a really cool species of turtle. I love it. Uh, and what's different about this species? A few things for those of you that don't know much about them, and I don't want to steal your thunder here, but. Uh, these guys, as he mentioned, live in cool mountain streams in Asia, uh, but they are also incredible climbers, which is why you have those uh, clamps on the... Exactly. Right. And that's why they have this long tail. It's a balancing. And these guys are known for climbing up rock faces of waterfalls, going right up to, you know, right. rushing water, um, and using their tail to get like a tripod almost. And it's what's really awesome with these guys if they get to a spot, and it's mostly the males that do this, the females don't do it as much. Once they get to a spot, maybe they can't climb any higher, they'll just tuck into the shell and fall backwards no and way. start over again. That's insane, man. You can look at them, they're real cryptic. It uh, looks like a stone. It does. You know, um, looking down you know, in a natural stream, you just think you're looking at a rock. Well, now this, this is an interesting shell. That is a captive raised animal. Uh, this is not a cat. Oh, it is not. Okay. But most of these are. This okay. particular one is not. All right, because that's an interesting looking shell design or shell shape. But they're, um, you know, in the wild, will these animals tend to get, do they get covered with any moss? Or oh, yeah. They do. Yeah. All yeah. right, because that's interesting as well. But um, now they have these. This is a TSA, Turtle Survival Alliance, target species as well. What's, what's going on in the wild 
uh, with this particular species? Well, unfortunately for these animals, they're being targeted um, not only for food and not only for the pet trade, but for the food trade. Really? But again, the, uh, these don't live in streams like you'd see red-eared sliders that hundreds of them can live together in one area. So you're only going to find a very few uh, numbers in any particular stream that you find. Okay. Um, you're not going to find them in big numbers. And in last year, there was a confiscation of Myanmar, over 800 of these animals in one confiscation. So if you think about 800 individual animals spread out over a range, that's a lot of turtles. That is a and, lot. And not just a lot of turtles, but a lot of their home range that probably got back into the species. Crazy. And so what's the ultimate goal with what you guys are doing here at Prospect Park Zoo with this species? Well, ultimate goal is uh, to set up an insurance colony, which we basically have going, gotcha. um, and, and find out how we can reproduce these and how, how we can breed them successfully in captivity. The long-term goal, the bigger picture goal is um, when there are confiscations like that, that we can help set up assurance colonies in country where they come from until we can find areas they can be protected in and hopefully reintroduce them. Cool. Um, you know, they have real particular needs, so what we learn here will help them better in Myanmar, in China, in Vietnam, in Cambodia, um, when there are confiscations, take care of those animals better there, because they would do much better to be there than here. They're brought all the way over right. here. Right. Gotcha. So, we can, you know, make use of that confiscation to set up a breeding colony. Um, and then what we would like to do, as we set up these centers in Asia, to bring the keepers over here and learn a little bit more about the specifics of breeding, um, in turtle husbandry, uh, recording temperatures, so they can take that knowledge back over them uh, and, and, and do it set up and do it in, yeah, for themselves. Well, let's have a look at some of the offspring, man. I mean, that's really neat. And so all this is just fresh water being cycled through just like a stream. Exactly. So they've each got their own segment. And the cool thing, as Lonnie mentioned, is you know, the females are pretty much going to stay in these small puddles and they'll get visited by males. So the space, these guys don't require a great deal of space. But look at the beauty. I mean, oh, that's a beautiful animal. They're really variable when they're born, too. They can be wow. either green or red. Uh, and I've seen lots of other colors, too. But, uh, but they lose that coloring. You know, they're, they're born really colorful. Um, but as they mature, they start losing that color. That's an awesome looking animal, though. My gosh, man. Little big head. Little big head. That's Little kind of an oxymoron. Head. Yeah, yeah. moron. I'm a moron because I can't say moron. <laughs> An oxymoronic language. There you go. That's a small big head. That's so cool. So do you have any numbers? Like how many have you uh, produced in, since this has been going? How long has the project been how happening? Many, yeah, how many will we produce? Um, we have 20, we produce 22, we have 28 right now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And we've already started this thing out. Uh, to other facilities, St. Augustine has gotten a pair, so oh, very cool. um, what we want to do is get other zoos involved so we can build up the numbers. Um, because again, um, there's been several confiscations here in the United States, not any single zoo can take all of the oh. animals. So, you know, not to put all your eggs in one basket, as we learn and we're able to share how we're caring for big-headed turtles here, we can share with other zoos and other collections. And, and these guys, are these, are they eating invertebrates? Are they eating pellets? Like, how difficult is it to get them started once they hatch out of the egg? Uh, it's, not a, it's not hard to get them started, but again, um, with any turtle or tortoise species, the biggest variety of food that you can give them, the better. Okay. So they do get invertebrates, they do get uh, worms, we do give them some vegetable material, and they do get some pellets. Awesome, and that's why they have that massive head to crush through maybe some freshwater oh, snails. One of their, yeah, snails or crayfish. They, crayfish is like candy to them. They okay. just totally love them. That is awesome, man. So it's awesome to see what Lonnie's up to. Now, you remember Lonnie is also a croc guy. We've caught some Cuban crocodiles together. Uh, but My last few days in Florida. In Florida, man. We got to get him back down to Florida. <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, he's also the reason that I joined up with the TSA because he's a turtle guy and uh, we have a lot of fun together. So always a pleasure to see you, my right friend. Here. Yes, man, I'm yeah. psyched. And uh, look forward to seeing more as this develops. Yeah, this is just the beginning. So we have to double this somewhere on the zoo.